Hey guys, how are you? Um, before I continue with this review, I just want to say that I have been a Sony fanboy for quite some time and I've been using Sony phones religiously over the years. However, before this phone, I've been using Samsung Galaxy S8 for three months. The inside specs are pretty much the same. I will be doing a lot of comparison to that phone. So with that in mind, the first thing I want to start off, of course, is the design. And the design of this phone is great. Aluminum body with Gorilla Glass 5 up front, Oleophobic coating, very little fingerprints, if any whatsoever. No scratches after using it for four months. In the back, there are almost no signs of using the phone. The camera lens has no scratches. This phone is very durable. I dropped it once so far. It was a bad drop and nothing happened to the phone. You get stereo speakers and there are no ridges here. There is no dust coming in. So, um, Given the fact that both the XZ and the XZS look pretty similar to this one, this one does have small differences that, that actually make a big difference and the design of this phone is absolutely flawless. You get the uh, standard Sony camera shutter on top, you get the USB-C, your regular volume rockers, fingerprint sensor here, you get the antenna bands, they give it a bit of a futuristic look. So. And yeah, you get the headphone jack, which <laughs> seems to be a luxury these days. So design-wise, this phone is awesome. 10 out of 10. Now, the display. The display is a 1080p LCD panel. And I don't know if my actual camera can catch this, but the display is really good. Blacks are black and inky. You don't get the uh, infinite contrast you would get on an AMOLED, but... It's it's one of the best, if not the actual best, LCD panel I've seen out there. In Sony's software, you get a couple of tweaks. You get the um, where is it? Yeah, you get the color gamut choice. You can choose the sRGB, which I am using now because of the color accuracy that they get. You have the Sony's triluminous display mode. You get the super vivid mode, and so on and so forth. So depending on what your eye likes, you can make tweaks you also have white balance as you can see I tend to filter out my blues a little it makes it easier for my eye and so on and so forth you have the video image enhancement and there are tweaks to make this display even more gorgeous than it actually is and trust me when I say even though the camera cannot catch it this is an awesome display even though it's 1080p however uh, the problem I have is that this is an HDR10 compliant display that means that when you play an HDR video on YouTube and Netflix, it should give you a much higher quality picture. The only issue that I had with that is the fact that when you scale that up all the way to full HD 60 frames per second, the phone starts to stutter, which means that it does not have enough processing power to actually play it properly. It's not as fluent as I would like it to be. It drops frames here and there and if you watch HDR content over a longer period of time, it actually becomes annoying. So I don't know why they chose to go with HDR10 if their actual hardware kit cannot support it fully, but it is what it is. So just keep that in mind if you're going to go for, if you want to consume Netflix and other HDR content. That's for the display. Now, media, audio output. You have the front facing speakers. They're not the loudest ones, um, but they're clear enough. The mid-range, I would say, has bumped up a little bit. So trust me, they cannot come even close to HTC's boom sound, what you would find on M8 and uh, M7, not even close. But it's much better than just one single lower firing uh, speaker. You have the headphone jack. And I have been arguing with this piece of machinery a lot. I just cannot get the audio output I want from this little piece of <clears throat> here and this is why Sony phones especially the newer flagships have the uh, Bluetooth LDAC now I actually had to enable developer options because I wasn't able to push out the sound quality out of it that I want the problem is every time I would change a certain setting regarding the Bluetooth LDAC uh, codec or LDAC in general the phone itself would just reset it without even asking me. 
I cannot get the audio output out of this phone that I want. If you're an audiophile, you do not want to deal with this phone. Even with my wired headphones, Sony's native app is bad. The actual audio DAC has a 24-bit resolution, uh, sorry, 24 hertz, 192-bit uh, resolution. And compared to the Samsung Galaxy S8 that has double that, it has 32 hertz, 384-bit uh, resolution, doesn't come even close. The amount of volume, the quality of the sound I've been getting out of the S8 is way, way better than what I've been getting out of this. And I, I'm sorry, it just doesn't come even close. The front-facing speakers are nice, they're fine. They're not mind-blowing, but they're better. But the audio quality on the LDAC and the actual uh, 3.5 millimeter jack is just subpar and it's it's impossible to deal with that as an audio file um, other than that camera camera is a disaster this is one of the worst cameras that I've seen because standard for cameras lately has gone up cheaper phones have better cameras flagships have awesome cameras this one is horrible and this is why First of all, there is a reason there are no bokeh or portrait mode photos natively in the app. You have to download it manually because the software just cannot handle it. I had it in my photos and my gallery is uh, really pretty huge. Um, I cannot find it where exactly it is, but edge detection on the bokeh photos is horrible. The other problems are, for example, when you enter the photo mode, and bear with me here, I will focus, I will take a shot. This is a low light shot. The problem is, for example, for a low light shot in the center, it's focused, it's fine. However, the more you move away from the center, even the ridges on my cable, it cannot recognize them. When you go to the edge of the picture, you get lens distortion. Selfies are horrible. You shoot a selfie and the actual corners where your face usually is, looks like your face is, you know, egg-shaped or an eggplant or whatever. So it's literally impossible to take proper photos with this camera. Software hasn't fixed it. I've been trying with other um, apps like Camera and MX and so on and so forth, and it's a disaster. It just cannot take a proper photo. It just doesn't do it. Compared to the Galaxy S8 and Pixel 2 or even Pixel 3 now, doesn't come even close. So for photos, I have no idea what Sony is thinking, but when somebody tells me Sony, I'm thinking about a company that invented the Walkman and pretty much makes the best headphones in the world. But when it comes to actual phone cameras and audio output in this phone, it's a disaster. It's an absolute hell. Performance-wise, this phone is great. I'm still rocking Android um, Android Oreo. I'm waiting for the Android 9 Pie update. And from what I've seen on the videos, uh, it does not have gesture support, so you will still have uh, on-screen buttons. Um, another annoying thing about this phone, and technically Sony software in general, is that you cannot customize it. Phone is a personal thing. You carry it around every day. You look at it every day. You should be able to have some level of customizability available to you, whereas Sony doesn't offer anything. Half of the icon packs on the Play Store won't even work with the Xperia launcher. And I don't want a Nova launcher. I want the proper launcher that just works. This is the old uh, legacy HTC weather clock, if you remember that one. Performance-wise... The phone is great. It chews through every single game that I play. Um, usually I used to test phones with uh, Asphalt 8, but I'm going to throw something heavier this time. I mean, it has Snapdragon 835, it has 4 gigs of RAM, and there is no reason for this phone not to chew through games. Because if it didn't, then, well, it would be worth the money I spent on it. Um, Implosion is a pretty demanding game. Uh, it costs 10 bucks on um, Google Play Store, but uh, it's worth it. Trust me, 
No ads. No microtransaction. Nothing. And it's extremely demanding. The graphics are three graphics are amazing. The gameplay is awesome. But at the end of the day, the phone chews through it, cuts through it like butter. So performance wise, like I said, there are absolutely no problems with the phone whatsoever. So that's pretty much it. Multitasking is great for gigs of RAM. Like I said, the software is stable other than um, the inability to customize anything within the software. The software is stable. I had no resets, no blocks, no stutters. The phone hasn't been overheating at any point while I was using it within these four months now. Um, I have no signal drops and the battery lasts five to six hours screen on time. The battery on this phone is a champ together with Snapdragon 835 and a minim minimalistic software, it really is. Like, it's one of the best batteries out there. So, my underlying verdict is that if you use a phone to play video games, take it. It'll chew through anything. I've been playing Fortnite on it, I've been playing PUBG on it, um, Implosion, Asphalt 8, I mean, seriously. I've been playing a ton of games on it, and it... it never ever stuttered if you want to watch videos on it um hdr 10 aside it's a great panel and sony has a couple of its software tweaks that make the the viewing experience even better on this phone however if you want to listen to music on your headphones if you're an audiophile if you want to take pictures then skip this one i'm sorry it just doesn't cut it and it's not up to the standard of current flagships the phone retails for about 250 to 300 euros new. That's what you can find it for. And that's pretty much it. If you have any other questions, um, write it down in the comments and I'll do my best to answer. I try to keep my reviews as short as possible, so it is quite possible I skipped something. Take care.